Hey everyone, I uh, have some updates today on my blob tracker tool I wanted to show you, including things like text layout and alignment, uh, tracers, some different tracker shapes, uh, and also things like autumn, like having a built-in uh, fill and inversion for the different blobs. Uh, this is a tool that's available to my Patreon supporters only, but I do show in some of my YouTube tutorials how to achieve this effect without having any other tools other than just what's in touch designer i hope you enjoy it definitely let me know if you have any questions or if you'd like to see some other features in the tool going forward thanks yeah so let me just kind of go through what the changes are if you want more of a tutorial on how the whole blob tracker works uh my previous tutorial i think we'll go through that better but this is mostly going through the new features that i've added in version 2.3 so i'm really excited about so first of all um you'll notice here um this preview kind of gives you the debug view of, uh, the, of the Blob Tracker tool. I've added that as an output. In fact, I've also reordered my outputs a little bit nicer. So um, the first output has what you see in my top corner here, which is just a, a, every layer that's currently being processed um, will show kind of a composited version of that uh, with everything over the top of one another. And then uh, I've got separate uh, outputs that will separate them into each of their individual layers for lines, fills, text, and tracers, which you'll see I'll get into these as I go through the rest of this. Um, and maybe I'll do an example of how you might composite those together differently than what I'm doing in this uh, this default composite output. Okay, so um, first thing I'm excited to talk about is uh, I've added a new tracking type. So this currently, this video is using the sort of default blob tracker type. Just to explain what that means, um, a standard blob tracker will convert an image to black and white. And then based on a threshold, which in my blob tracker is this threshold offset, you'll pick an offset where you're going to say, you know, these anything below this or above this is going to be uh, my white pixels versus the black pixels, and it tries to find blobs that are within a certain size, um, area size uh, on the on the image. And so, this is just your standard blob tool uh, that uh, that yeah just just uses that what the bright or dark parts if you're using the invert invert threshold, um, which will let you look for dark dark parts on the image instead of bright ones. Um, so that's the blob tracker one. Then there's the motion tracker, which does a, a, a cache difference. So we look at the difference between frames to look for motion amounts. And uh, I have added a little bit of a feedback to this to help uh, fix any issues with uh, interpolating frames or things like that, or um, just to kind of smooth out motion. It, it adds for better um, consistent blob tracking. So if you want, uh, as we go forward with like the text indexing and things like that, that it'll stick an index to that motion a little better than what I had before. Uh, and then the new one that I've added is this edge tracking. Um, I'm gonna adjust my thresholds a bit here to make it not slow down so much. Uh, but I've added edge tracking because uh, there's been times where sometimes this using this edge will uh, work out better for me than what I want, especially if there's like a, maybe a subtle color difference that I want to find um, find a difference for. Um, yeah, I've just added this, this edge as a new one. Uh, I'm going to go back to blob because for this particular video, I kind of like the uh, the regular blob tracker. Um, trying to find a decent spot here. Okay, and then let's see. Uh, as far as other new options go, I've only I've reordered these a little bit to be a little more logical, so you can invert first before you change the threshold. Um, and then I've also changed sort of the ranges on these minimum and maximum area to what's a little more normal. You can go way past what this is, so I can go down to one. You can go down to zero actually, but I didn't have that by default because I didn't want by accident you going to zero on a really high resolution video and that'll really slow things down. So uh, I put the, the farthest down by default to one, but you can manually put in zero. Same with this um, this max area pixels. I maxed it out at a hundred right now, but you can you know go up all the way to big, you know, bigger numbers uh, into the multiple thousands, even if you want to. Okay, so and that's deciding what the shape or how big you want to filter out for the size of the blobs you're searching for. Um, the rest of this hasn't really changed for the morphological options and uh, the tracking parameters as far as like retaining uh, different tracking uh, blob tracking. Okay, so let's move on to the next tab here in style. I'm really excited about uh, this change. Let me go back and let's get more more of these blobs on here first. Okay, so in the styles, um, I have this new option for shape. So 
Uh, all I had before was this blob bounds as the shape of the tracker. Um, but now I've added some options so you can change it to a standard square. So um, every every blob coming out will be just a, a square centered on where the blob tracker is. And this uniform scale is going to work for any of these shapes that I'm about to show you, except for the blob bounds. The blob bounds will always lock to whatever the bounds of the actual blob in the image are. Um, there's circle, another shape. Uh, I have triangle. And then also a crosshair. And all these options, have, you can change their color. So I can go in and change my line color to red. I can change that line width, um, no matter what the shape. And then in addition to the line color now, I have also added this fill color in. Um, so if I bring, bring the alpha up, you'll see I have now a fill color that I can, I can play around with. Um, and then uh, another one that was requested, I think, by a, a decent amount of people was this invert uh, invert fill. So you'll see that it'll actually take the color inside of that fill and invert it. You can also color this as well. So like if you have the invert turned on, it will um, use this this color actually as well as along with the invert inside of it. So um, lots of flexible options with that. I'm going to put this back to the white invert. Um, yeah, so that's everything new with the style. And as I said before, uh, the different um, the different layers of that, so the fill comes out of its as its own separate layer now. Um, if you if you want that fill, um, I didn't export the uh, the invert part of that, but you can make that essentially by taking the source video and um, doing a difference between that source video and this fill. Uh, in a composite top. Uh, within text, uh, there's the same options here to change font and color, uh, but now I have these new alignment options that I've added. So by default, they go to center center, but I can now uh, align my text to the left and to the top. Um, maybe I will go back to blobs because it's aligning to where the blobs actually are. And I have these oblong ones, so it might not match up on the top uh, if I just use a regular square. So. Um, I've aligned to the left and the top now my square. I can select, you know, left on the bottom to be down in the bottom corner. Um, and then I also have this additional offset that I can add. So like, maybe I don't want this in the exact corner. I want it to be, you know, up a little bit off the baseline of it and inside um, wherever. And, you know, maybe it's too unreadable on the left. So I want to bring it out to the right. So now it's outside of it. Maybe go to the top. We have a nice corner label there. Um, Anyway, pretty fun. So it's you know it's it's doing the origin of the bottom left of the text is where you're you're kind of referencing, um, and uh, yeah, pretty excited about these options. So uh, next, I have this custom text table dot, and what that's going to allow you to do is if you'll see down here, I have uh, a dot with some text that I put in here, and I can uh, simply drag that dot into reference inside of here and now you'll notice that that text gets added in to my blob so um, based on what the id is it will go through these and just cycle through uh, selecting the text from this table and so that'll allow me to do whatever custom text i might want to do um, okay so those are our new text options and now I also have added tracers into this tool as well, because this is such a common thing to add on um, to this blob tracker effect that I've also added tracers. So if I bring up the alpha on this, you'll see um, my tracers happening between each of my blobs. Uh, I can increase the number of tracers, uh, the max number at least, like I'm, I'm not getting maybe so many of these, but yeah. So max number of tracers. And then um, I've also got this scroll. So um, You'll notice, I mean, maybe you won't notice that well on this, but if I'm not scrolling, it'll kind of keep the lines in the same place. But if I let it scroll, it'll it'll move through all the different um, all the different blobs as far as which ones they're tracing from. It won't only start from the first ID that it noticed, if, if that makes sense. Um, and then it, the option by default, you can has you have straight tracers, but you can also go with the curved option if you like having sort of curved lines instead of uh, straight lines between what you're doing. And yeah, that's all from the new options. Uh, like I said, the reason I have um, some of these tools out here is because maybe um, 
maybe before I uh, add my text over the top, maybe I want to add, you know, some sort of effect. So, you know, I've got my my video coming in over here, but then um, for my text, maybe I want to add a bloom over the top to give that sort of glowing screen sort of look to it. And then, um, then maybe that's what I want to do over the top of my video. And so now I've got like a nice little bloom around my text. Um, yeah, so you've got the options here, everything split out um, so that you can composite them together however you want after the fact, or you can just use this, this my, my composite that just puts all the layers on top of each other coming out of the actual tool. Um, yeah, anyway, I'm really excited about these new changes. If there's any new requests or things you might have uh, for, for this tool, definitely let me know. I'll keep on updating it. Uh, as I hear back from more people and keep seeing what people do with it. Um, yeah. And if you, uh, if you don't uh, want to, if you don't want to pay for my Patreon in order to get access to this, I also do tutorials that are free that show you pretty much how to do everything that's involved to build a tool like this. So um, check those out on my YouTube channel and subscribe for any new updates I might have in the future. Thanks so much.